us on faithandwhatever.com. You can find us on all podcast aggregates. Uh, search for us, Faith and Whatever, in iTunes, and YouTube, in Pocket Cast uh, is a popular Android one. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear what's going on. So we are in the uh, pop topic slash religious segment of the of the discussion. Now, uh, I'm sorry, 20 questions discussion. Do we want to say pop topic in the way that James says it, or do we want to leave it alone? Don't do it yet. Let's just I'm take not, a let's just take a team wide vote. I think without James here, it has no value. Okay, so uh, pop topic and twenty questions. So Garrett, you are leading us in this discussion so today. today um, we're going to talk about the item that set the record for the highest sales ever. Is it the iPad Pro? <laughs> it is not just with your endorsement. Um, <laughs> this item is uh, not even out yet. Uh, the first person will not get delivery of this item. Halo until six. <laughs> Halo six. No, it is um, Half Life three. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, most Too people, soon. Most people won't get it until the end of two thousand. No, sorry. Most people won't get it until the end of two thousand eighteen. With some people getting it into two thousand seventeen. It is the Tesla Model three. Tesla Model three sets record. For the highest sales of any item ever. X. In the first 24 hours, Model 3 received over 180,000 reservations, setting the record for the highest single day sales of any product of any kind ever in world history. Um, assuming that's a true statement. They've gone uh, now to have 325,000 reservations. The, uh, a reservation costs $1,000, so Tesla has 325,000 million dollars to begin production of the Model 3. So if you don't know anything about the Model 3, it is Tesla's uh, fourth vehicle, even though it's called the Model 3. The first one was the Tesla Roadster, the first all-electric sports car, um, unless you consider Honda Insight a sports car, which no one would. Um, (laughs) Second car is the Model S, which is their luxurious sedan starting at $65,000. Third car was Model X, their two and a half year late SUV starting at eighty grand, averaging costs over a hundred thousand dollars, and the Model Three, their fourth car, with a base price of thirty five thousand uh, dollars. That is before any federal tax rebates, which, by the way, only qualify for a car company's first two hundred thousand models of any specific model. So, um, for the first. Uh, They've already sold out of their, not sold out, they've already used up all of their federal tax credits in their pre-orders. It's expensive to be environmentally minded. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, before I have a question for you guys, but first um, we can talk a little bit about Teslas. Josh and I are both uh, car guys. We've connected over cars. Chris, for, is, Chris, the one who me. Chris is too. Um, Josh and I, We would. you were in high school and I was driving around and some Jeep or Subaru or Audi or something. We talk about cars. Uh, what I like about you is you follow through at least 50% of the time. Uh, when you first started, you said you wanted a 2006 Pontiac GTO or 2004 um, or a Toyota Celica or what was it? MR2, MR2 Spider. MR2 Spider. And you had a MR2 Spider. I did. I did. Uh, because the GTO was not something in my price range at 16. So sick. Uh, it was a cool car, man. And I actually had a buddy at work at, when I used to work at In-N-Out who had a uh, GTO, it was bright yellow. It yeah, was like yeah, yellow yeah. as the sun. Yeah. And uh, rad. <laughs> so much fun to drive. Um, shouldn't have let me drive it as a 16 year old, <laughs> <laughs> but it was super cool. But yeah, so I, dude, I what are love your thoughts on the Tesla. I love the Tesla car so much. Uh, when I first, so uh, Tesla is far out of my price range. My price range is far more something uh, like used Mazda. <laughs> is about what I can afford <laughs> on any given day. Not, not boutique auto manufacturer. <laughs> and uh, um, I think the v- most valuable thing that I've seen from Tesla is just the uh, <laughs> the willingness to think in the pies of the sky right. idea. Or it's just like, you know what? Uh, I want to do this, so let's figure out a way to do this, right? It's like a tech company dabbling yeah. in automotive. Um, and that's super cool to me just because it's pushing the limitation. It's It to me is kind of recapture and maybe this is an overstatement chris correct me if i'm way too out of line here 
but it feels like it's recapturing the spirit of American ingenuity uh-huh. with Henry Ford and, yeah, I mean, and the Dodge Brothers. All these people saying that, oh, Elon Musk can't do that. And in the meantime, he's busy doing it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and uh, uh, is that a reach, Chris? Launching spacecraft yeah. into space and returning <laughs> the, the first stage lander. And building uh, a Hyperloop. Yeah, contracts with NASA for undisclosed amounts. So to me, Elon Musk is 21st century Henry Ford. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I feel. I think he's far more innovative than Henry Ford. Henry Ford just brought us the assembly line, really. And, and charcoal briquettes. And charcoal briquettes, yes. Man, but I, uh, soon forget. I think Elon, <laughs> Elon Musk's uh, much broader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly uh, better than maybe. Uh, so I, and love, I don't think he's an anti-Semite. Which, that's, okay, <laughs> that's also true. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Henry Ford. Uh, <laughs> Luke. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of, of the Tesla. Uh, I would I would give my left arm to own a Tesla. Honestly, I really would. I don't yeah. think it's one of those cars I can ever honestly own as a pastor. Uh, I think there's just well, something about that, uh, you know, just the perceived. Yeah, but, but, I mean, look at their fourth car is, is, is if you pre-ordered a base model today, or it's probably you can't get the, the federal tax rebate, $35,000 minus $7,500. Federal tax rebate minus, what is it, California is $2,500. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. So you're, you're at about twenty five thousand. Yeah, somewhere in that range. I know plenty of pastors who drive thirty five thousand dollars minivans. Yeah, yeah, but see, I don't know. It just there's something about it. I think the preconceived notion of it. Um, but but I, you're correct now. Yeah. But maybe when they release two or three more models. Yeah, and they also five have a or scooter. Years. I don't know. But I'd really like a Speed Three, so I'll probably yeah, get that first. But yeah. here's what I think is super cool about the Tesla. I love that it's um it's it is a dual sided issue. The pro for me, the biggest pro for me is just the less accidents that might be able to get yeah. you know caused because we're relying on better technology uh the immediate con that comes up is the malfunctioning of technology yeah. that happens and then also our infrastructure i don't know if our roads are meant to handle that i don't know you know i just i, I just don't know uh yeah. you know how well those things will balance out but every single time of a self-driving video comes up yeah. i watch it and yeah. like 15 minutes long 20 minutes long. the guys are playing board, board games uh, yeah yeah i'm just <laughs> i'm just sitting there and these guys are sitting like this well, just, you see what california did and i'm just watching no they want to pass a law that your driverless car would have to have a driver in it at all times oh man you can't come pick you up nope which they can do that the tesla model oh, that's can, like the whole point of the driverless car the tesla model s can uh come out of your garage and meet you by the front door yes. so you wouldn't uh, california you, you would california there has to be an operator and the, the car has to have manual controls so that the operator could take over <laughs> yeah I'm at not, any time i'm not terribly against that right now just because the technology is so new us. uh because google car hit somebody uh but my i think my favorite know, my most favorite thing about the te- no they did uh, uh, pedestrian uh, no another car yeah uh, my most favorite thing about the Tesla so far is that just the fact that when, you know, when you plug it in, it does the auto update stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that it updated overnight with this self-drive component and yeah. nobody said anything about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> they just dropped it and did it. Yeah. Uh, that's seriously my favorite thing there. Just because he does like Musk and the company will do something. They released all of their proprietary information yeah. out to the public right. and we're just like, you know, expand, build make on it, it nice make and it easy for hackers to get into their cars. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's again. That's the other con. Um, thank you for mentioning that. For the thing me. about the Tesla is that it's uh, the Model S specifically. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more specifically about the Model Three. Um, is it set precedent for so many things? So um, it exceeded every crashed test rating. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though these cars start at sixty thousand um, dollars, no other car is as safe and as fast and has as many features for anywhere near it. So even though it's an expensive luxury item, um, if this is and this is, I mean, this is kind of their first mass-produced car, um, the fact that they could uh, make it at that low of a, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's sixty thousand dollar car. Average price is probably closer to like seventy five or eighty. The things that they can put in that car and to make it as reliable as it was and is, even with a few maybe that caught on fire. Um, <laughs> uh, but that happens with with uh, you know. Ford Explorers, you know, I mean, that, so, that, so that definitely is, this is new technology. Um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't you, just you never buy anything area. the first round, though, right? Right, Chris? Yeah. Like, you I never mean, get... I mean, I would, but... Yeah, I would not. Shouldn't. But I think the game changer is going to be from the big three. Because, like, a few years ago, Ford geared up, and I don't remember if it was on the Fiesta or the Focus, but one of their small car platforms... I think they, it was the Fiesta. They redeveloped the entire platform so it could take an electric, a hybrid, or a gas engine. Okay. And then they sold it with all three. 
And the factory was tooled in such a way that one factory could build all three of those cars. That's right. pretty big. So they could follow wherever the trends went. Uh -huh. If the market goes all electric, they're right there with a much cheaper electric car because it's all based on components they yeah, already have in place. Already, and they've yeah, already mass and, and some of those are out and they're just not selling right. in so the numbers that people thought they the would. The GM equivalent is the Chevy Bolt, right? Which and is that, not out and yet. that idea is it's coming out this year and it's not right. it's not Exciting. popular. Nobody cares there. And I, I think and it's priced similarly to the Model 3, which is going to do 0 to 60 in less than six seconds. <laughs> Have well, you seen the interior of the yeah. Model Three? Crazy screen and no other, you know. It was, what I think is, but what I think is the, the coolest is how Tesla is just has nothing to make up for, right? And so the bigger companies have just the the fallouts, the bankruptcies, yeah. the kind of the lying, the things like that. So there hasn't been that that same type of media hit. The image hit hasn't really um, permeated Elon Musk and Tesla as much so i think that's what makes the three more exciting to me but i think that electric cars are going to be hold, held back until they really get fast charging down they have to because they're they're the, <sighs> the range anxiety i think is still too much for a lot of people to overcome my i have a, a friend who drives a nissan leaf right yeah. and he's like 100, 100 miles it's 108 miles. miles to the charge and i was i was looking in well i before i bought my mr2 uh, when i was commuting up to grad school i was driving 50 miles one way and uh, I was looking into the Leaf because it had the one person thing for the carpool lane because I would have to leave it from my house at five in the morning to get to where I needed to go by 8 a.m. in L.A. traffic. And um, so I was looking into that and then I saw it only had a 108 mile charge. And it's like, what? Like, I get 100 miles. I have an eight mile like yeah, buffer. If, if you hit yeah. no traffic and yeah. don't have to divert anywhere, yeah. you can make it exactly where you need to go and back. And, and it's, it's that terrifying. Car's not, that, that's not for you. I mean, well, most people don't have that kind of commute. Right, right. And so, but I bought the MR2 because it was a lot more fun. And I realized it was a terrible decision because I was getting cut off by smart cars, which is, there's nothing more frustrating <laughs> than getting cut off by that two-seater piece of junk. But uh, the idea being like, they have to be able to cultivate something that allows it to charge faster, to go further, and do it sooner if they're going to be able to keep up there. Because uh, my buddy who drives Leaf says, that, you know, if I, I only use this for my six-mile commute to work, like three miles there, three miles back. Otherwise, right. I would never. So does he own a second car? Yeah, he owns yeah. like three cars. So, But it's, it's like because it's just a worthless car otherwise. Right. And, and so that's how it feels. Like this stuff is – Musk and the Tesla company are more willing to push the bounds boundaries – faster right. than the other ones doing because if if anti brake or if automatic braking technology is already available my subaru outback that means that they had it a while ago right that means yeah. it's not new it's not new as far as the tech companies themselves are concerned but it's this very slow rollout and everybody kind of steps together but right? you also have to consider the cost to do what to, to implement that kind yeah, of technology. yeah to put it all in yeah. but that, that technology is already 10 years old and that's part of why though tesla can get away with doing these things because they cater to a higher end market yeah, yeah, and so right. it sets the standards I mean, and do, it pushes do, it. I, I could probably Google this. I mean, do you think they take a loss on their cars just to get them? I don't think you could afford I to do that. I doubt but. it. Let's, I'll look it up right now. Yeah, Josh will look it up. Um, for example, Google's self-driving car, the light, the LiDAR that's on the roof is $80,000. Yeah. Um, my wife really likes the Model 3 that just was announced. Yeah, they lose more than $4,000 on every car sold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Um, not surprised. Not quite sure. And this how is they from uh, Reuters. dot com. What year is there. that published? Uh, August 10, twenty fifteen. Okay, so they're, they're still losing money on, on the it's Model. Losing S. more than four thousand dollars on every Model S sedan it sells, uh, using its reckoning of operating loss, and it burned three hundred and fifty nine million in cash last quarter. How did they propose in a bull market for luxury vehicles? How did they propose to get that back? Uh, Musk has been on because their supercharger service is free. Stocks and subsidies. If I'm you guessing. pull up to a Tesla with a Tesla to a supercharger, it doesn't cost you anything to fill up, as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. Um, so my wife really wants a, a Tesla Model Three. Um, Gosh, I wish I could use that excuse to go. Buy, man, my wife really wants a Model S. I have to be a good husband. No, and not provide Model it for S. Her. Model Three. There's no, I know. I may say, well, she <laughs> model would be fine. And uh, one of the reasons is the hype, right? So she mm -hmm. saw some, like she saw someone she knows on the internet, like a you know, post about about it you know um she saw the sales some of the sales records that were made um safety standards that it's proposing to beat and exceed um, and just the way that it looks on the interior is um like something you'd expect 10 or 15 years into the future so i think 
that's capturing a, lo a lot of people, and that's something that the that the big three does not do. They only do in incremental changes. They do not right. do <coughs> crazy changes to the industry. Um, so I think that's exciting. It's basically, uh, I don't want to use iPhone equivalent because iPhone does do e incremental upgrades, but it's basically a tech company that come out with a new gadget, and their gadget is a car. Yeah. <laughs> um, and people like that, especially millennials like that. Um, on top of that, the what's it called? The Gigafactory will be the largest uh, building ever built in America when it's done in Nevada. Is that right? I think so. Elon Musk is either a super villain or uh, <laughs> super genius. Wayne super Enterprises. Genius. So my question here, here's my question for for the pop topic. Week. Um, uh, and by the way, they're they have all that money because of like just the after it went public. Their yeah, stock has yeah. shot yeah. up seventy. Per, it's still seventy percent higher than when it was private. Even though they're losing money on every car. Yeah, even though they're losing money, so people yeah. are still. It's yeah. like it's just the ultimate crowdfunding <laughs> for billionaires. It's, yeah, just, it's like, just like we make yeah. this car just so that give me all the Teslas, <laughs> all the Teslas. That's why Elon's so smart, right? Yeah, he's you're using right. other people's money to. He said, "How can I make my stocks go up? I'll sell cars that make a loss on them, but people will love my company more." Yeah. Um, my question to you is: Is what is the best or worst example you have? of pre-ordering something. Um, the Tesla Model X, the SUV, was two and a half years late. Uh, 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 Elon Musk is on record saying he expected around 100,000 pre-orders, and he has 325,000. For um, the Model S? The Model I mean, 3. for the Model 3? Theories are it's going to be complete disaster <laughs> time-wise when people get their, get their cars. Um, Thinking of that, do you guys have any examples of any uh, pre-orders that went really well? Like, you're really impressed, you got it early, maybe it was a CD, maybe it was a video game, maybe it was a movie ticket, or really bad, where you never got it at all. Do you know, Chris? I don't pre-order a lot of stuff. Um, I did pledge to support Star Citizen, which I've mentioned a few times on this podcast. How do you and, feel about you feel? And I, I think it's a really, it's a, interesting. I'm glad somebody's doing it, I'm glad it's happening, but I don't know that I would want everything to go that direction. So they've managed to raise, I think it's $110 million now to make this video game. Dang. Is Elon Musk the CEO? No. Okay. It's Chris <laughs> Roberts. Yeah, basically. And th so once you pledge, uh, you can just pledge $40, and then I'll get you the game and a starter ship. And they let you fly around in what is essentially a test universe and report bugs. But you're getting to play the game kind of as it gets finished. Yeah. So it's an interesting insight into the development process if for people who've never maybe made a video game and uh I, there are definitely some drawbacks it's taken longer because they got more money than they expected to get and, and they so, added features right yeah the feature creep has been kind of huge and there is a question of will people be sick of the game already by the time it comes out because hmm. we're still probably a year or two from the full game coming wow. out but if i've already been flying around in their universe for a year or two when the game comes out will i want to keep playing yeah. So it, it's it's interesting. It's what, an interesting what, experiment. What's your timeline? Uh, when you ordered, when did they say that it would be done? When did you get beta access, and when is it now going to be done? Um, I don't know. I first read something about it like three or four years ago. Jeez. Yeah. And, but I didn't have, at the time, a PC that could run it, so I didn't even bother. And so then, I built one. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, towards the end of last year, I was reminded about it. I was like, oh, yeah, let's go check this out and see if they're still going. And it had just grown into this giant monster okay. and... So uh, we'll see what happens. They're trying to have the single-player campaign done by the end of the year, I think they were saying. And they have, like, uh, I just saw the actress, what's her name from X-Files? Jillian Anderson, I believe, uh -huh. Uh -huh. is playing character. And uh, was it Gary Oldman? I mean, they have some oh, real A-list yeah, talent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the extra money is cool. It's allowing them to do a lot of big stuff, right. but it's push back the release date so far that's a valid point i mean what's the point of, of having a game that takes six years to develop if and i want to get to play it this whole time i'll wait for it if it's cool yeah yeah so I, i'm i'm glad that it's happening i'm glad that one company is doing it i'm i don't know that we want every company to do it do you think that uh that i mean just final thought uh the single fact that computing technology changes so much that pre-order games like this potentially could be up uh tech technology-wise, be obsolete by the time they come That's out? That's another interesting thing, because from when they started to now, look at the Oculus Rift and, and VR. Right. Now that's a very real consideration, and something that maybe three or four years ago was just kind of yeah, a novelty or just on the horizon. Uh -huh. Are they considering Oculus? Yeah, they've been talking about full VR integration. And things like, I know like there's been a Which big... Which could extend. Yeah. 
there's been a big update in they use the cry engine mm -hmm. and then there's so there's been a big update in the cry engine and how it works and so th they're still i assume on the older version because that's where they started and they want to keep all their stuff that they already did and i don't know if it all transfers over to the to the updated version and, so when you have a project that long, I'm sure that there are all kinds of logistical nightmares. Yeah. yeah. Mine is simple. Mine is the pre-order of every Halo game one through four. Worth it. Yeah. Most amazing things I ever got. Um, I So Halo 1 came out when I was 13. Uh, Where's my helmet? And uh, I think you have it in the other room. Um, Papercraft? And... Um, so Halo 1 was already out by the time I was in junior high, and that was, like, just the most fun thing that we ever did in youth group was yeah. go to Kent's house at the Cracked Inn and play <laughs> play a giant Halo before tournament. Before my time. And yeah, yeah. And so that was, like, just a year and a half before you guys got there. Uh, but we pre-ordered Halo 2. Uh, when I got it, I played it so much that we this, almost... This was back in the GameStop days. You put down five bucks, and you just get yeah, it day, day yeah. off. yeah. Yeah, and you get the little receipt with your order number on it, scan it, here's your copy, give us forty five more dollars. And it was yours. And I remember going home and just playing Halo two and finishing and it was uh right when I was kinda getting into multiplayer, like online live playing and stuff. And um I just sat on Xbox every day till like four in the morning and just played yep. uh almost actually almost entered a major league gaming tournament with some friends to try really? and play. Yeah. And uh um had a yeah, so we were like fifteen when Halo two came out and then Halo three came out and just I've never been disappointed with the multiplayer of Halo stuff. Some of the campaign has been a little bit so-and-so at times, but uh, just that when Bungie was in control of the Halo series, it was just next-level spectacular for me. And I've never been more excited about... That's really the only thing I've ever pre-ordered. We bought tickets to go see Pirates of the Caribbean once oh, for yeah. my 13th birthday. Chris went, my dad went. To help you get a good seat? And, oh, yeah, but hey, that was fun. Like the midnight showing. Yeah. Midnight showings were cool um, of stuff. Hangover 2 was pretty funny. Um. Yeah, but I so I don't usually pre-order stuff that much. So either. I do a, a fair amount of kickstarting. Um, I haven't done it actually in a long time because I just um I wasn't. I don't know if it was really worth it. I have a, one of my very first kickstarters. Total disaster. So this uh -oh. is right when uh, <laughs> the smartwatches were kind of coming out. Uh, uh, when I say I don't, I mean pre pre Moto 360 like I have now, like um Pebble Pebble smartwatch, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was this smartwatch called the. Uh, Cuckoo smart one, and it was um. It Sounds was a, like a crazy name. It was a ah. <laughs> it was a really simple idea that they would use an analog watch with a the back face of the analog watch was going to just be an LCD screen and just show you notifications and vibrate and have a button that was customizable to uh, anything you wanted for it to do. It could activate your shutter on your phone. Um, it was f affordable. I mean, it was fifty bucks at that time. Um, most smart watches at least started at 129. Um, that piece of junk never worked. I mean, it was a total, I mean, and they, you know, one of those Kickstarter stories where they raised, you know, $2.3 million and it was in the top five um, when it, uh, when it was released, uh, when it, they finished funding in the top five highest funded tech projects, full of bugs, never worked for more than a day or two, would not stay connected to my phone, uh, would not receive notifications, but basically it would connect and disconnect. Um, it was not consistent at all. So um, I rarely spent, you know, more than something. If I wanted something that Kickstarter, you know, just 10 or $20. Because it's just a risk. You know, I really wanted to, one of the things, I, two things I really wanted to pre-order, uh, a sous vide, which is, uh, James would know. It's a um, immersion circulator for cooking. Uh, actually, okay, so quick plug. We are friends with a guy named Jack Scalfani, who has a YouTube channel called Cooking with Jack. Great guy. Gem of a guy. Uh, really, really, really spectacular. And he just did a uh, cooking video on where he tested the sous vide. Oh, yeah. And it was, dude, awesome. Yeah, he, put was, a, he put a ribeye steak in a bag, 133 degrees Fahrenheit for a full perfect, hour. Perfect. And then he seared it? For medium rare and then seared it for two minutes on each side. Whew. You should go to YouTube.com, Cooking with Jack. Check out that video. Uh, didn't get it because it was just, you know, it was a hundred pre-order was 129, 130. I just didn't want to spend that much. But then there was, um, I'm really into, maybe we'll show you the tech someday. Uh, I use a lot of micro four thirds cameras, which is a lens system from Olympus and Panasonic. And someone made the first, and let's from like first in 50 years, American made camera. It was going to be a really small camera using the micro four thirds lens system. 
Um, almost a little bit, but probably twenty five percent bigger than a GoPro, but full size sensor. You know, and uh, total up my alley. Totally something I would do, but you know, pre order price was five hundred bucks. I'm just like, <sighs> so just, I wasn't even going to consider it. Um, I'm just I'm just going through real quick my Kickstarter campaign to see if there's anything that I really like. I guess my favorite, most useful thing is I pre-ordered and kickstarted um, a cell phone mount that just uses a small square magnet um, right on my dash and right on my phone and uh, bought one for myself and my wife and literally use it every day and uh, it looks really clean and sweet on my in my car. So uh, it's not a $35,000 car uh, so I'm not too bummed if it gets extended or never, sh- never shows up. <laughs> I can imagine being pretty bummed if my next vehicle uh, doesn't materialize because of uh, manufacturing issues. Um, so yeah, I, one of my predictions was going to be where will we be in Model 3 uh, in 2016. I don't think it's going to be any difference. So that'll be a prediction for 2017 or 2018. We'll always do that video again. Uh, by but the way, we'll, we'll follow, we'll follow youtube.com J A K A T A K six, nine, Jack attack 69. We will, uh, we'll have to do some, some collabs with Jack. Um, but we'll follow along with the uh, model three story a little bit, especially when people start uh, posting some reviews. Make sure you link um, that. We'll have to make sure to link that in the yeah. description. Yeah. Uh, all right, man, I can't wait till the Tesla comes out. So stoked. Cool. Uh, I just, I just <laughs> We we went down to uh, the model or the Tesla store, our our close one in down in Newport. It's called Studio. And uh, actually, I don't know. And I just sat in the Model S, Chris, and like you push. A, I was with my I was with Eric. You push a button, the door opens, or, or the handle comes out, and then you open the handle. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so you then you sit. And I'm just sitting in there, and it's like, don't touch anything. Don't even breathe in here. You can't even afford the oxygen in this <laughs> place, dude. <laughs> So, uh, good, good. That's a fantastic pop topic, Garrett. We, we need to do more car stuff on here. Yeah, we do. Um, so, 20 questions. Uh, I've got the questions. Okay. Quite, all right, I've got the answer, I guess, this, this right, right, right. round. Uh, sans James. So, you guys are doing the guessing. And uh, your hint is, I don't know if this will be too easy. I don't think it will. Uh, your hint is, it's a person. Okay. Is that a good yeah. one? Or, okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, is it, uh, are they alive? Uh, no. Um, hmm. let's see. Are they... It's a, a 20th century? Yes. It's a dead 20th century figure. Uh, involved in politics? No. Well, not, not main. Spoke yeah. about politics stuff. Involved but. in entertainment? Uh, Yeah. Involved in music. Yeah. Singer? Uh, yes. Primarily singer, I mean. Uh, That's what they're known for. Rapper? No, like not a rapper. Um, let's see, primarily a singer. I mean, I guess, like, that was just a part of what they did, but, I yeah. mean, they're not, a, they're not a guitar player that sang backup. No, 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 no. Right. It's not like a Kurt Hammett yeah. kind of thing. I don't think... He sings better. Yeah, but you're like a whatever. I mean, is rapping even singing? Was that a trick question? I don't know, but you asked. And no, and no. so that's another question you just asked. Um, Country singer? Um, mm, well, it depends. Went through a country phase, or kind of country ish, but not. Man, you're giving the hints like left and right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying like, like Darius Rucker over here. Not primarily. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean, Chris? We want the blowfish. <laughs> Not pr- not primarily. Okay. So it's not Merle Haggard, basically. No, 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 not Merle. Out. This person's probably definitely not Merle Haggard. Um, yeah. Like you know, in the same way Elvis did a country. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. I wonder if it's Elvis. No, it's not. Elvis. Um, man, I'm nine. really bad at musicians. Twentieth uh, century dead. Uh, did they also play an instrument? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we can narrow down the genre a little bit, Chris. Uh, did we ask him if it was male or female? We did not. No. Male or, uh, is it a male? Yes. Okay. You're halfway there. That'll clear. Oh, 10 questions. Well, it's not Janis okay. Joplin. Um, we'll center down the genre a little bit. We know that country phase is the only thing that we have. So um, rock would be, I guess. Yeah. Because rock stars can go country a little easier typically than. Is it, was it a rock musician? Mm-mm. Oh. 
Hmm. It's not someone from rock. But they had a country phase. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'd call it a phase. Like, <laughs> they did an album that was like that. So, you know what I mean? I don't know how to answer that without just being direct about it. I don't know. So, if it's not rock, I guess it could be but pop or pop or... And they're dead. They are dead. They're super dead. Jazz. Um, I guess we could try and narrow down when they died. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the date. Do you want me to look it up to be sure? Yeah. Okay, let me do that real fast, just in case you guys decide to ask that question. That's a good. Don't look, Garrett. Mm-hmm. I will stab you in the throat. Okay, got it. Did okay. they? D- oh, go ahead, Garrett. I was just going to throw out a year, um, and the one that would help a little genre a little bit um, was this person. Well, dying is it? He could have died at a really old age. That would be kind of hard to. That's true. They could yeah. have been completely retired. Yeah. Yep. Let me just tr- let me just bum, tr- bum, bum. let me just try. Uh, did this person die pre nineteen eighty? No. Don't know if that helped at all. Um. <gasps> Ooh. What do we got? What do we got? So not nineteen eighty. Male. I wonder if it's like dead. Michael, Michael Jackson or something. Um. I don't know, I, as far as I know, there's no country album. Yeah, that's what I was. Thinking. Yeah, no country <laughs> album for me, Jay. Uh. Well, this one was kind of, it was kind of country. It wasn't like... Is it, are you mainly. saying it's throwing us off to... to Don't focus that. in on that. <laughs> um, Just like you wouldn't think, like Elvis did a country album, but you wouldn't think of Elvis as country. Yeah, I would. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess you would, huh? Yeah. I thought Elvis would be considered more rock. Yeah. We did both. But he His didn't. early stuff was very country and rockabilly. Yeah, okay, that's not this person. This person is less of that. Okay, like it was like... Exponentially less. <laughs> uh, what about what about like primarily playing an instrument? Should we ask if like, I mean, we know it's not rocks. So maybe guitar isn't a good guess, but piano could piano. be. A... Uh, did he? Uh, was he known for playing the piano? No. What was the singing answer, Chris? Did he say that he did sing? Yes. Yes, he was a singer. He was a singer. And he also played an instrument, but we didn't specify. No. Well, it could be guitar, but I mean, I, I would assume. It's most common. But it's not rock, so... I'll give you that as your second hint because you're on question 14 right now. That is a correct assumption. Yeah, you play guitar. Yeah. Play guitar, not rock. And not country. We know that if he did, it was only a genre. I mean, only one album. Yeah, like a phase So who plays guitar that's not... And uh, died in the last 30 years. That's not rock and roll. I mean, literally what genres play guitar? I mean, there's... Blues. Blues. Would he... Um... Was this person during their career addicted to drugs? Uh, like, was it widely known? It was widely known. Well, I don't know how you define addiction, but this guy did drugs. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah, this I mean, it was like a known drug user. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jerry Garcia died. Yeah. In after 1980 and played guitar. And did not do rock. What did he? What, what did he? What did he play? Hippie music. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you call that rock? Just yeah, I guess so. Uh, some people would. Just for the sake of <laughs> hippies, probably would. Yeah, freaking hippies. <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding. We love you, deadheads. Drugs. I mean, you know, the pot is a good guess because if that's one of the few drugs that people aren't too ashamed of letting everyone know they use, you know. So, I mean, did that, he... Are you going to guess? Did he smoke a lot of pot? Yes. Okay, so that's going to go into his identity. Yeah. It's but plays guitar. Pot smoking guitar player. Makes me think of Willie Nelson. Yeah. But he's only a country singer, practically. Right, right. 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 And he's alive. Oh, that, yeah. Right, dead. I... Yeah, I mean, your guy just will not die. <laughs> it's all that pot. Big pot smoker. Guitar player who's dead. You are down to four questions, and then you got to ask, is it such and such? Um, I'm out of my league guessing a pot-smoking guitar player. musician, guitar player. Who died. That See, didn't the, play rock. I don't do any of those Who things. died after 1980. And didn't play rock. <laughs> well, you know, you never asked if he didn't play or did play rock. You yeah, I cl- did. You didn't clarify that. We asked, is he prim- primarily known for rock and roll? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, this person died somewhere between 1981 and 2000, right? Right. And still in the 20th century. So he could have played rock, he's just not known for it. Is, is that what he, I guess that's what Josh is getting to. So what are you looking at, like? Well, let me, let me do something real fast before you ask any more questions. <laughs> oh, wait, he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's not. It's so not. it's probably a, a blues player, would be my guess. All right, well, how many pot smoking blues players are there? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> All of them? Big blues. <laughs> I'm not a big blues uh, music aficionado. I mean, so. I know Josh would pick somebody he thought we would know. No, no, this is not obscure. This is super yeah. popular. Uh, it's going to be a kick ourselves in the face. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Like, I, try, I really tried not to be, like, okay. jerky about this one. Um, did he die after 2012? No, remember, it was, it was 20th, 20th century. century. He did okay. uh, die between eighty one and two thousand. Yeah, I won't. Got it. We you won't already, count that. You we won't count that. that. Yeah. I was just trying to see if it was recent, like almost. <laughs> or if I could be consistent with my <laughs> answers. <laughs> no, well, you were because you had just said that before eighty and two thousand one. Um. Not rock and roll. I know. I keep thinking of, of of tragic, tragic rock stars who have died. Um. Maybe we can help narrow down one of his songs. Uh, how would that? How would that help us at all? Uh, did he have a like a, a hit single? Oh no no! You know I got a better question. Was he part of a band? Let me double check this. Or was he known just for himself? Basically? He was. Uh, technically, yes. Technically. Yes, technically. he was part of a band. Yes, he was. But you would know him just for himself. Is what you're saying? I know him just for himself, so whatever that tells you. <laughs> was the band named after himself? Uh, it, yes, yes. What question? 17? It was like his name plus yeah. something. Yeah. Not Hootie and the Blowfish, huh? <laughs> Hootie's still alive, my man. <sighs> Classic Charles Hootie. Um... Actually, I don't know if that's his name. Right. <laughs> is Hootie even his name? I just... Was he a blues player? Um, let me double check before I say yes or no. I don't. Th- I didn't want to yeah, say no. Genre thing, but a guitar player doesn't play rock Classical. or country, really. Classical. So it'd be a little like indie. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna know any indie artist. It's not indie. I'll just tell you that. And the answer to your other question was no. So you're on question 19. Not indie. You're thinking too niche, honestly, dude. Hot smoking guitar player didn't really play country and he didn't play rock. I mean, he... I guess, well, I guess he... To narrow, I guess... You're not going to know him for blues, is what I'm saying, but he technically did blues. Right, right, I know what you mean. mean Like, it's not B.B. King is basically No, no, yeah, it's not that. Like, he did a blues album. Yeah. Sounds like he did a lot of albums of stuff he didn't do. And, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, he was all over the map with the music that he kind of changed and progressed with what people liked at Is the time. Is he a Caucasian? Uh, no. All right, you're on question 20. So this is it. So we got one question that we have to guess? No, yeah, this is the, oh, yeah. this we have is to the guess, guess question. Is. All right, so let's recap. Male, died sometime between 1981 and 2000. Uh, he is a guitarist but is not primarily known for his shredding abilities, like a Jimi Hendrix kind of right. thing, who is a combo, but better known for his guitar licks. Uh, did blues, did a, did a litany of different album styles. Um, is it Bob Marley? And nice. It is Bob Marley. <laughs> that was it. That was a good oh, way to bring it back. I didn't realize back. he was, didn't die until that recently. 1981, he died. Oh, we oh, picked a bad hand. cutoff picked, here. Yeah, yeah, I picked 1980. That's yeah. right. Kind of threw yourselves off there. Yeah. But he did a blues album. He did that kind of country gospel album yeah, yeah, yeah. there. People didn't like yeah, it. He played reggae, one. which reggae rock is a subgenre of reggae, but reggae yeah, itself no, is not right. rock. It's not rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, it was in the band, Bob Marley and the Whalers there. So that was that was a good one. That was a really, really good Pulling one. I got a... Yeah, <laughs> dude. That was... Yeah, all right. That's what it feels like to be part of a team. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like that. You got us there. Yeah. Helped us out. No, it was good. Good was job, fun. us. Uh, all right, guys. Follow us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash faith in whatever. Garrett is at T Student Life. I'm Josh underscore Carmen. Chris is at Marion Ranch. Uh, our absent brother is at James Y U I L E. 
Uh, be sure to check out Brian Sands and Jack Scalfani as well. Um, they have helped I'll us a lot in, in our show. Yeah, we will post links to their stuff. Uh, Garrett, do you want to plug your channel or anything real quick before we go? Yeah, or? Uh, the, uh, this week I posted a, well, I guess it'll be last week. For those watching, I posted a video on my YouTube channel, Transformational Student Life, kind of directing some of my followers over to this channel as one of my many projects. But um, my channel is really kind of... Uh, targeted for students high school students junior high students i mean anyone can totally can totally get something out of it but as as being a youth pastor i wanted to create an opportunity for stu- for me to connect with students during the week uh something like a maybe that i'd write a blog but i thought hey you know what i like filming videos and doing videos so i made a youtube channel so uh check it out for some inspirational kind of content sometimes funny content and really just to be challenged in your faith yeah chris you want to plug anything good um yeah i i would also like to mention that we have gotten some prayer requests type stuff from Mm -hmm. some people uh and it's cool to be able to be praying for folks so if you ever have anything that you want to talk about or communicate um please know that we you know we all work as pastors here uh, and we would love to help out with that kind of thing um just to pray or to provide you know counseling or help or mainly uh, resources if we can't help you directly, um, professional resources if you're struggling with things like that. Um, so yeah, feel free to uh, send us an email at faithinwhatever at gmail.com and we really look forward to connecting with you guys next week. Mm-hmm.